Okay, so if you just watched my video on the Denon AVR X4300H that had one blown channel, I had my customer bring in their speaker for that channel. It's a Miller and Kressel S1C, and it claims to be a 4 ohm speaker. There it is. All inputs are 4 ohms. So what I want to do is get my ohmmeter out and measure the woofer but now this unit may have a crossover and I can't measure the tweeter because they're normally capacitively coupled so let's take a look at this guy look at this thing so it's got the woofer and possibly mid-range down here oh can't have that logo crooked down here on the bottom and then as we get higher up it's got the tweeter most likely up here on top. So what I want to do is go ahead and try to disassemble this unit enough where I can actually do ohm measurements on the woofer, the mid-range, if there even is one, and the tweeter, which I'm sure is up here on top because it actually specifies it is a transmission line tweeter Miller and Kressel sound. These are actually really nice sounding speakers. So first off, let's just go ahead and do an ohm measurement on the woofer. So I've got my ohm meter here, I'll get the polarity correct, and we want to see about 4 ohms. And I see 3.9, that's pretty close. Now as you can see the switch is in the normal mode and it tells me for normal single wire amplifier connection, use the normal input terminals top set and set the toggle switch to normal. For bi-wiring connections, consult your owner's manual. So I think if you were to switch this switch down to here to bi-wire, you would supply the woofer here and the mid and the tweeter right here because it actually states BioWire tweeter input. But this came in with a single amplifier connection so we'll go ahead and leave it in the normal mode. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually test the mid-range and the tweeter. Okay so yeah I went ahead and removed the covers and look at that it looks like looks like somebody put the speaker in backwards but then this one's okay. And then we have the two Miller and Kressel tweeters. One appears to be upside down from the other one. Not sure what that's all about. Some foam to separate the sound. That way we can disperse it up and down. Uh, but let's go ahead and see some terminals. We'll go ahead and disconnect these terminals down here. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the tweeters out possibly. I might just go ahead and... Uh, take the crossover board off and see if we can get to the leads and just measure the tweeters that way. But I think um, first I'm just going to hook up some audio. I've got my uh, Sony test receiver up here. I'm just going to pipe some audio into the unit and that way I can actually just listen and see if I hear some sounds. Uh, I'm pretty sure the woofers are going to be fine because they do measure for them. So I want to make sure I hear some sounds out of both tweeters and that's going to tell me quite a bit right there. Alright, so I certainly don't have copyright free audio going into it. But as you hear... And so that's what the tweeters on. And then if I turn the tweeters off, you can certainly hear the difference. So I'd say the tweeters are actually working perfectly fine. The woofers seem to be fine. So let's turn the tweeters off. So I'll go ahead and disconnect one woofer. I have the one going. Hold the other one up. I do hear a difference. Turn the tweeters back on, you can hear them up here. Definitely hear the difference on and off. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the crossover off and we'll just go ahead and see if we can measure the uh, resistance of these speakers just make sure everything's okay he might just have a bad wire i'm not sure but i'm highly skeptical because that one channel was blown in that receiver and it looked like it had been quite warm like it had been driving into a load for quite some time all right well check out this crossover look at that it's got three big metalized film capacitors really good for high frequency audio a couple of electrolytics 
Got a big sand block resistor there, another one over here on the corner. And then look at these guys, three big 8 ohm sand block resistors. I'm not sure if they're 10 watt or 15 watt or what, but they're on the tweeter control uh, back here that allows you to go to high efficiency, low efficiency, or normal. So what I think they're doing is they're either using uh, no resistors, maybe one or all three, hard to say. But uh, just look at the way this thing is built. Really, really nice. And of course it says Miller and Kressel Sound Corporation made in the USA. This is before they ship stuff off to China. That is great. Let's see if we can find a date on something back here. Uh, no dates on those. Oh, look, I do see a date on that one. 9432. So that means 1994, the 32nd week of 94. Oh, look at that specialized MK Miller and Kressel capacitors. 32 microfarads, 50 volts. Another MK32 at 50 over here. And so let me see if I can flip this up enough to see the solder connections. Uh, all the leads are uh, bent over and hand soldered, it looks like. They didn't even clean up the rosin on those. Uh, I really like to see that absolutely wonderful construction. It just looks really good. I wish they really still made stuff like this today. Look at the attention to detail on those switches. Instead of just running wires down, they added terminal strips and then brought the circuit board over to solder it down. Big, beefy connections. You, you just don't see anything like that today, unfortunately. This has gone by the wayside. And so I unplugged the connector to the speaker, so I'm hoping that I can just ohm out all four speakers as they come into these connections, because it's a nine pin connector and they're only using eight out of the nine pins. So I'm really hoping I can ohm all of these speakers individually here. Okay, so I know that these two leads on the bottom go to the front speaker that's mounted backwards. And so let's just go ahead and check the resistance on that guy. 6.5 ohms. And then all the rest of them appear to go up. So, I think we'll just go ahead and check, see if we get anything there, 5.7 ohms on that one, and we'll catch this guy over to here, 5.8, and then least but not last. Six point five ohms. So I don't see any problems with any of these speakers. So I wonder if we can check some of these capacitors on the capacitor range. I'm not concerned with ESR, I just want to see if they have any value to read. 47 microfarad. It reads 42 on the uh, capacitor itself, 42J 100 volts. This one over here reads 14. I may not be able to read that one. It may have a coil across it. Uh, that one reads 47. That's definitely not a 47 microfarad capacitor. It's a 4 microfarad. So somewhere with the coils and whatnot, I'm reading a, a word reading, but I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and just switch off. The speakers will put it in the buy mode. Oh, but now I do read 14.5. That one's perfectly fine. And this one was reading 47, 47.2. I think this one must be in parallel with it somehow. Yeah, same exact reading. Anyhow, the speakers test fine. The crossover tests fine. Oh, the foam has certainly deteriorated, so I'm going to be very careful with that. I just barely touched it. All right, so we'll go ahead and plug this back in here, and I'll give it back to my customer at no charge with a clean bill of health. Anyhow, once again, just admiring that circuit board. Look at that construction from 1994, so it's been 26 years ago now. I'm making this video in July of 2020. Uh, yeah, really good construction. I wish I wish you could buy it today just like this, but I don't think you'll find anything like this made in the USA. And if it was made in the USA, this one speaker would be $500. 
all the screws are machine thread screws. They're not just wood screws digging up the cabinet. They actually put some bolts on the inside for machine thread screws. Isn't that something? up and running so I couldn't really find any problem with it seems to be working absolutely perfectly the resistance checks fine the crossover checks okay it actually sounds really good so anyhow just a quick little video on the Miller and Kressel speaker that was brought in to be tested uh, just to verify that it did not have a problem that blew up the Denon receiver I hope you enjoyed this video Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I'll try to answer it and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching this. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and uh, click that like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.